Well, today, people, I'm going to give you the conclusion to my shroud research just because it is something that I researched for three years and I've talked about it a lot. But a few weeks ago, I got to a spot where I never, ever thought I would be, and that is giving you who this is. And if nobody believes me or they think I'm crazy or how is somebody just who reads a little bit going to find out this information? Well, that's, frankly, I don't believe I found it myself still. It's pretty hard for me to accept, but I'm just going to give you a theory because that's all it is. It's just a theory of mine, and what do I know? I'm not a theologian. I'm not a historian. I have no degrees in history. So this is just my theory of who this guy is. Now, I never thought I would get to this point of identifying this man simply because I knew from all I have read about that the history of this person would have been totally eliminated or it would have been so ass backwards that you would never recognize it. And the Romans just should have left it out of history because I recognized it right away. Now, I've always said Shroud Man, he was somebody fighting the Romans in the final battle of the temple in 73. I've said he has a tie to the family of Cleopatra, a descendant. And I have stated many things, but as far as finding a guy in real history, I just never thought I would find somebody. But I knew if somebody presented themselves and everything fit, I would recognize him right away. And that's why I was stunned, just stunned, a couple weeks ago when I came across the information that I did. Let me introduce you to somebody. This guy's name is Gaius Julius Sohemus. And he ruled the kingdom of Amessa which was just north and east of Judea. Now, what do we know about Gaius Julius Sohemus? Well, seems the Romans, when they took over, and by the way, he was the last ruler of Amessa, seems after the battle of the temple in 73. The kingdom of Amessa was just run over by the Romans immediately after 73. But there's a strange twisted history that doesn't make any sense here. Clearly Sohemus, he was maybe at the beginning pro-Roman and then he converted to Judaism and he led the assaults against the Roman army. And this is my, this is me talking, this isn't history talking. This is my version of history based on everything I know about this time period. He was Simon by Bar Giora because he was a convert. And believe me, certain things really fit to that story. And he gave the Romans one of their worst defeats on the battlefield. Right before the final battle of the temple, he was considered a savior to these people in Judea. He was a priest king. His nickname was Little Dagger. And is that why that somebody's holding a little dagger in the Last Supper portrait? That's a question I really want to an have answered. He was clearly fighting the Romans, but the Romans added this to the end of his name. Philo Caesar Philero Haramus, which means lover of Caesar lover of Rome. Philo Caesar, Philo Romeus. That is what the Romans added to this guy's, the end of this guy's name. And this is just one of those little digs at the historians. They try to reverse the history this time. I find that incredible that they had the balls to add this to this guy's name after his death. I think that's incredible. Now, he is from the royal family of Amessa, and there is just a strange, twisted history here, and none of it makes sense. It's It contradicts each other, but one thing we know about this guy, 
He is named in honor of his patronage to Heliopolis. A statue of him was erected at Baalbek, and he is named patron, sun god of Baalbek. And I find that incredible, because that would give his birthday December 25th, if he was the sun god of Baalbek. Now people such as Joseph Atwell and others, they say that they turned this figure, this Jewish man, into a sun god. Well, he actually was a sun god. And they called him El Gabel. And that is the sun god of Baalbek. And I find that totally incredible. Now, it seems that there was some kind of soap opera going on. And it says, and this is talking about his brother, Azizas. It says, little is known on the reign of Azizas. However, he is known for his childless, childless marriage to the Herodian princess, Drusilla. And that is the same guy his brother seems to be married to in a other version of history. And it says Dr Drusilla was married to Azizas, ended their marriage, and she fell in love with Marcus Antonius Felix, a Greek freedman who was the Roman governor of Judea, whom later she married. So it seems a serious soap opera was going on here between the woman of the Sohemus and the governor of Judea and maybe his brother. It's all very convoluted and it's all very strange. Now it also said he assisted the Roman Emperor Vespasian in 72. No, he wasn't assisting Vespasian. I believe he was fighting against him or maybe originally was pro-Roman and then by the time 73 rolled around he had converted and he was fighting against the Romans and probably had his eye on the emperorship of Rome, or at least the eastern part of it, the area around Judea. Here it talks about the archaeology of the royal family of Amessa, and where is Amessa? It's kind of around uh, ancient Homs, present-day quarantine. It says, the royal family of Amessa is imperfectly known. What is known about the Amessani dynasty and their kingdom is from surviving archaeological evidence, as the ancient Roman historical sources do not provide a lot of information about them. And they've totally rewrote history, I believe, or just left a huge part of it, the final chapter out. Now, what did the priest king of Amessa wear? Let's just read this. And this talks about Baalbek, Heliopolis, as it was known by this time. Says each year, neighborhood princes and rulers send generous gifts honoring and celebrating Amessa's cult and its temple of the sun. The priesthood of the cult of El Gabel in Amessa was held by a family that may be assumed to be descended from Sampsicurimus I or the later priest king Sohemus, either by the priest king or another member of the dynasty. And what did they wear? The priests that served in the cult of El Gabal, and that is the priesthood of the sun, wore a clad costume. The dress of an Amessene priest was very similar to the dress of a Parthian priest. An Amessene priest wore a long sleeve and gold embroidered purple tunic reaching to his feet, gold and purple trousers, and a jeweled diendum on his head. And I find that very interesting. And they were directly connect connected to the Parthian priests, uh, the King Ab Abgar regime, who the holy image is sent to. It says here, and it talks about his consort, Drusilla of Morientana. It says here, she was the child of the late Roman client monarchs Ptolemy of Morientana and Julia Arania. It says here, and it talks about his consort, Drusilla of Morientana. It says here, she was the child of the late Roman client monarchs Ptolemy of Morientana and Julia Arania.
Drusilla was the great-grandchild of Ptolemaic Greek Queen Cleopatra VII of Egypt and Roman Mark Antony. And I told you in a video a year and a half ago, Shroudman is in the family of Cleopatra and Mark Antony, and I connected it through Shroudman. And those of you who follow Ralph Ellis know that he connected the royal to the family of Cleopatra through Helena, or as she is known, Drusilla, in real history. And I connected it to the family of Cleopatra through Shroudman and what I knew about him. So when you have two different people connecting it through two different ways to a royal family, I think you have a connection there. And here, this is Sohemus. Now here is a look at Sohemus and Drusilla, and she is known as Helena in earlier text. But when I saw that face, I recognized him instantly. Instantly. Now Joseph Atwill and others who talk about this time period say that they took a Jewish figure and incorporated a mythological sun god story to him. Well, here he is, El Gabel, the sun god of Baalbek. And they took his Parthian long hair off of him and put a Roman haircut on him. And he looks sad, because he should. They totally rewrote the history of this man. And he fought the Romans tooth and nail. He was looked at as his final savior. Also, he must died in 73. I think that is so key. 73 AD. This time was really the time of the Messianic movement. And Robert Eisenman goes over that very well. It wasn't around 33. This time period of the Messianic movement came around 73. 70, 73, somewhere around there. And they were moved by a prophecy that a star from the east would become emperor of Rome. And what does this inscription say about him? Well, let's go back. Now here it talks about the inscription, and it says, Sohemus is honored as the great king, the Regis Magni. In the inscription, Sohemus is honored as, and then it gives a word here, which means a patron of the colony at Heliopolis and has been granted the honorary consular status in Heliopolis, city of the sun. Now, if you match up this face to Shroud Man, and I did in a video a few weeks ago, I knew it would match perfectly, and it did. And <laughs> I was sitting there with my brother when I did the comparison. And my brother is one that really doesn't give a crap about ancient history. And when I told him about this guy and what I thought I found, and when I showed him the comparison, the look in his eyes told me all I needed to know, that it was a perfect match. But just in conclusion here, this is Sohemus from the kingdom of Amessa. He was part of the Parthian royal family, descendant of it. He has a connection to the family of Cleopatra through his consort. They are written about in Eusebius and others from the early, early church history in really a terrible negative way. But if they were really pro-Roman, as the history writes, they never would have been written like that. From Eusebius, the history is all wrong. Right after 73, the final fall of the temple, what happens to the kingdom of Mesa? The rulers are totally eliminated, and it becomes part of the Roman state. The Romans take over the history. This man here, where does it say he was buried? It says he was taken back up to Mesa and buried in the cave of his ancestors. And in a very telling story from Josephus, in a final battle, it says that this guy was throwing fire on the Roman ram. And it repeats ram a few times. 
and clearly Josephus is referring to some sort of war instrument, but clearly in symbolic terms, when this guy throws fire down on the ram, and then he stands naked on the temple, and the veil of the temple becomes twain, or torn in two. Clearly he is saying that the end of the age of Aries has happened, and a new age has started, and the word eschaton is directly associated with this guy and look that up. This man, let me be perfectly clear, was crucified in Jerusalem in 73. He was buried in an expensive burial linen, and when the people of his family didn't want him staying in Jerusalem because it was coming under total Roman rule, they took his body away, and his image was left on the burial linen and it changed the history of the world forever. Hope you thought this was interesting, and you all have a very nice day.